That's a nice break. Imagine having the cue ball here. Tip the nine on the right side. Hey, I'm here with world champion pool player Torsten Homan, and he's going to walk us through how he thinks about playing a uh, straight pool rack. So Torsten, take it away. Well, you know, I'm known for being a bit more aggressive on the break shots. Big break here by Thorsten. We nailed it. Huge break. Old school style of hitting the balls on a break shot is you know, a bit more conservative. Um, making sure that you make your object ball, you don't scratch, okay. and then you work through the rack where I'm a bit more aggressive. You're swinging for the fences here. Um, and you know, honestly, I always, I don't know always what's going to happen to the cue ball, and um, but it's my educated guess. You know, over the years, I developed a sense of um, feel for which direction the cue ball is going after it blasts the rack open. So you're you're and firing it into the rack and you're saying, I think it's gonna go here. I don't know for sure, but I think it'll it'll sort of end up in this sort of area. You know, depending on, for example, in this case, I know the cue ball is running into the five, making a full contact. Okay. Um, so I'm not gonna hit it with follow. Um, and it's not gonna scratch here. The cue ball is not coming down here. I just know that, you know, okay. but there's some break shots where I couldn't tell you 100% where the cue ball is going. It's just I go, you know, with my guts, what my guts tell me. Okay. Um, the key is to make the object ball and to not scratch. And um, if you look at my history playing tournaments, you know, I have a pretty good uh, track record. And all my high runs um, happen like that, mm. where I try to play old school and you know, be very conservative, make sure I make the object ball and not scratch, but I get stuck so many times, or I really have to work through the rack. But my way, it conserves energy. You know, it's, it's confident. I usually have a wide open rack, and all I have to do is pick the balls and make sure I set up a new break shot. Great, let's let it rip. That's a nice break. All right, so what's the first move? Right, right, right away, I would be like maybe 13 ball. This is actually, uh, you know, we don't have a, we don't have a break shot here. And the first thing I look is, do I have already a ball available that could be our next break shot? You're thinking 14 balls in advance? Come on, you know. I'm talking high level straight pool. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so I usually look the left or the right of the rack, is there a ball available? We don't have one. It okay. means we need to manufacture one. Okay. So I still have to keep that in mind. You know, I usually try to keep my flow going. Um, when you play straight pool on a high level, you don't want to overthink too much. You know, that costs energy and you just create more problems than there are. So, um, but you know, experience comes into play where I know which balls to use to manufacture break shots and still be uh, on the safe side and okay. not running into um, into a wall where you don't have any shots anymore. Okay. So um, that could be a little bit of a problem. So I have to remove the two ball before the eight. Um, unless I, I break him up. I do have this cluster here, which uh, I need to break up, which um, looks like we'll be using one of those four balls as a break shot later. Okay. Um, You're going to manufacture one of the, the 13, 6, 1 or the 9 is going to be. be your break so shot. So first I, you know, I take a walk around the table take a and uh, check everything. So the 13 is available, that's good. Okay, what I see here is, I think the 7 ball is available in the corner. It's a fairly easy shot. All I have to do is, because I'm too straight on the 13, okay. if I get to the low side of the 13, I create an angle to make the 13 and notch the six into the one, which would develop the one into a break shot. Okay. And I have the 14 as a safety ball. So if you get, if you don't get perfect on the 13, you can use the 14 next to get perfect Everything, on the 13. I mean, I try to always keep it uh, simple. Okay. Uh, easy shots that are within my ability. Um, 
but I do want to have options. Okay. I don't want to risk a position where if I don't get there, I have to come with a stunt. So, and this is the first way, and we still have so many balls uh, available. So even if I don't get there, um, I still have options. Great. But this is already my plan, okay? So make the seven, try to come on the low side of the 13, so I can develop the three as a break shot. Great. I have the perfect angle to make the 13. <laughs> Let the cue ball naturally roll into the six, and then now it's all speed control. Mm. You know? If I hit it too hard, it might put the one ball here, which would be the worst spot. And if I hit it too soft, I'm not gonna get the one out of the racket. So it's all about speed control. Okay. How'd you do? I uh, think I did all right. The one is out. I just have to figure out a pattern to get rid of the six and the nine. Okay. You know? uh, ideally, I wanted to hit the nine now, but uh, I'm a little bit close to the wall. So I'm just going to go with the 14 and then try to tackle this problem here as quickly as possible. Okay. So this is pretty simple. You know, have the five on the side and the three. Um, we do have the one outside the rack, so now it's just uh, trying to stay out of trouble with the cue ball. Okay. And I'm never afraid to bump into balls, I like that. Okay. Um, you know, at, at the end it's a game, it's fun. Um, and as, as long as I don't run into major traps, you know, I can always try to improve my situation, maybe develop another break shot so I have options. Okay, so you're not afraid of, of uh, maybe getting yourself stuck because you know what, it, what, what, what might lead to getting stuck and you avoid that. Once the balls are open like that, mm -hmm. um, it's all about risk management okay. and knowing my ability and um, finding a balance between being relaxed, keeping my rhythm at the same time um, not being too overconfident and just dogging balls or running out of position. Gotcha. So uh, I quickly found a little pattern to get rid of those balls. Okay. If I shoot the 12 now and I run the cue ball here against the rail, uh -huh. I can make the 2 and then I have the 15. Ah, and then you've uh, solved the 2-8 problem. Because if I end up on the, on the rail with the cue ball here and have a slight angle into the 2, I might end up having to pull the cue ball around or drawing the cue ball into the eight and that could disturb what I have now. Okay. But if I leave the 15 and I get shape on the two, I can just stop it and have the 15 as a continuation. Okay, because the 12 doesn't, uh, doesn't act like the 15. Well, the 12 is on the rail. It's always a bit tricky. Okay. And uh, imagine having the cue ball here after shooting the two. Mm. The 12 is a really di difficult shot, but the 15 is wide open. Great, great. And so now you're going to do that, the 2 to the 15? Yep. Okay. So now, what's where, where are you trying to get after the 15? Actually, I I'm still good, but I didn't want to be um, on the 15 with that much angle, mm. which now kind of takes me into those balls. Okay. But if I if I can clip the nine on the right side from my perspective, yeah. Then here on this side. Okay. Okay. Then I should bring the cue ball out, and without disturbing the one. You know, I want to yeah. keep the one there, but keep it in that area. So your plan is to hit the 15, come straight up, clip the nine a little bit, and then float over there? And then just take it from there. Okay. <laughs> I still have the one as a break shot. Mm -hmm. Now it's just finding a pattern 
to end up with a good angle for the one as a break shot. Okay. And, and the in one, general, yeah. I like to play balls that are close to the rail, especially when you have balls here near the side pocket on this or that side. I like to get rid of them as quickly as possible because if you leave them to the end, that always is a problem. Hmm. Now we have the three ball here, but in our case, the five will give us a good way to play position for the three. That's why I'm not worried about it. Okay. Otherwise, I would try to remove it right away. Okay. Here you go. Thank you. No problem. So what's when, when you hit the eight in, what's the next shot? Well, um, nothing can really go wrong. I, I could stop the, the cue ball on the eight and have the 10. Okay. Uh, what I want to do is bring the cue ball back so I have options on the six and nine. Okay. So at this point, I made up my uh, final pattern is uh, I want to shoot those three balls. Last? Yes. Okay. It's no, now, it's not really ideal, but you know, when you play straight pool, I'm not really worried about having a perfect key ball. You know, key ball is the ball that I shoot last before setting up for the break shot. Okay. Um, ideally, my key ball would be here. And then I just play a stop shot and have my break shot, the one ball. Okay. But uh, I don't have that available. Um, so sometimes you just have to play with what you got. And uh, in this case, I think I'm just gonna leave the five three at the end. Okay. And, and so you're gonna a, get rid of the six, nine, and 10. I have a big space for the five. I can be straight, or I can be on this side, I can even be on that side to still get a shot on the three. And then I just have to float up to the center of the table with the cue ball for a good break shot. Okay. So my job is now to find a, a pattern to play the 10, nine, six. Okay. And then come up those two. So from the six, sorry to, sorry to interrupt you. Um, wh where are you trying to get to get the five in? If I would have gotten straight on the six mm -hmm. or over on this side, I would have just played position for the five in the corner. Okay. Um, now I still have an angle to comfortably draw the cue ball over here. Okay. If you are inexperienced, you might get a little hasty on the six mm -hmm. and then you end up here with the cue ball. Okay. Okay, too short. So I want to make sure when I shoot this to not be short. That's like, that's in my system. I. I just know that, okay? But if you're inexperienced, you might not be aware of it, and then you under hit the ball. That's mm -hmm. what happens. Mm -hmm. um, as an experienced straight ball player, I just feel that. So I know I have to at least draw the cue ball to here. If I come too long, it doesn't matter. I still have a good angle. Okay. Okay, I overdrew that by a mile, but the position I have on the five, I can still manage. So you had a natural sense that the five would go into any one of three pockets, if you, or any one of these, you know, either one of these? Yeah, sometimes you just have to make sure, or you have to notice that if you're too short, like you are close to done, or you have to come with a trick shot, but if you're too long, you always have, you want to give yourself a chance. So where are you trying to land now? I aim for the center of the okay. table. All right, and now you're set up for another break shot. Wow, 100 ball run. Do you feel, like right now, do you have a sense of how many balls you could run if you really just knuckled down? Two racks. Two racks. Or 10. Anything okay. in between. So you feel like like you're 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 hitting all the shots right. You're on. You're not like going too far, or too long. Is this pretty typical, or are you do you find yourself less in control or more in control? Well, you know the equipment plays a 
big part. And if you have, uh, if you're comfortable with the table, mm -hmm. you know, people always say, oh, this is a tight pocket table, or this is a table with big pockets. I think it's more how balanced the table plays. Okay. You, know, you can have a tight pocket table, but it has a fairly new cloth and polished balls, okay. and the balls will slide in, and the rails are consistent. I think you play better than a table that has huge pockets, but the rails are a mess and the cloth is old, it doesn't do you good. Well, thank you so much for uh, taking us through that 14 One Rack. Don't forget to follow Torsten on Instagram and also Facebook and also QLab. There's a new app Torsten made called QLab. Go get it. It's free. It's, it's free? It's free. It's on the what App Store. What are you store. doing? You don't have it yet? Go get it. Oh my God. Okay. Well, thank you so much and uh, we'll see you next time.